Hi there! In previous video you learned how you can build a Evidently report. In this video I'm gonna show you how you can quickly start monitor your data and models with help of Evidently monitoring dashboards. Basically this is very nice and easy setup, especially in case you work with patch models and you do not have any monitoring infrastructure in your company yet. In this case all you need to do is to calculate some reports store it somewhere and based on those states you will be able to get very nice monitoring dashboard. So let us try to do that. First of all I'm going to import evidently data quality preset because I think it's very nice base for data quality monitoring. Let's quickly do it. Here it is and also I would need to import workspace. This is the base where we are going to store our data. In our case it will be just a folder in our file system. And also in order to configure our monitoring dashboard you would need to have a couple of more evidently components such as plot types, counter acts, etc. Let me import them as well. Now we have all needed components and now let's create the workspace and the project. Again we are going to work with our local file system. So basically it will be just a directory in our working project directory. Our working space is created and now let me create a project inside of my working space. We're gonna need to give some name to our project. Let us call it New York Taxi Data Quality Dashboard or just Data Quality. Yeah, I think I would call it New York Taxi Data Quality Project. And also together with the project you can create some description so that it will be later much easier to understand what do you have and why do you use this project. That's it and finally after you did some changes into your project it's good to save it so that you can make sure that all changes you did before are saved. You can see that the result of our commands is the project configuration which you can read from there. So you can see the project ID, name, description, etc. So now let's add some data to our project. And again, as I mentioned before, all you're gonna need is the report. So let's now build the report and then add it to our working space. I would call it regular report so that we remember that actually it's always good to calculate such reports regularly, store it in the workspace so that we can track the progress of our project. And here I'm gonna add date time because I don't want to have this date time to be equal to the default value which is date time now. I prefer to specify the particular date because I want to have a plot in my dashboard associated with the specific date. So I'm gonna build a report for let's say 28th of January so let me specify this date. As I told you, I'm gonna use only one day, 28th of January, so let me specify which part of validation data I'm gonna use to calculate my report. So let me use between function. And I believe that's it. 
our report is ready. So let us now first preview the report, make sure we like actually what we have inside, and then we will add this report to our workspace if you are happy with the result. Basically, I'm just going to run these calculations. Yeah, it's already done, and we can see that well, that's pretty heavy preset. So we had our dataset summary, including the configurations like target column, prediction column, date column, number of columns, etc., etc. So pretty a lot of configurations there. Also, we have some summary statistics for every column we have, like prediction column, passenger count column. So feel free to analyze them in the details. Also, we have some statistics about missing values and data related to correlations. So this is very nice. I think I'm happy with the result, so let me add this report to my working space. For doing that, I'm going to use object we already created, workspace. I'm going to use add report command, and I need to specify what report I'm going to add to what project. So let's do that. I'm lucky because I still have project object here in memory, so I just can say project.id, but in case you do not have it, you can always derive it, because as we've seen before, let me just yeah do that. Here is our project ID, right? But I can just call it by .id and my regular report. So let me run this. And here we are. Now I suggest us to move to the terminal and see how our project actually looks like. So for doing that, I go to my terminal. Now I move to the monitoring, right? And from this directory, I can basically call evidently UI. Evidently UI. Actually, here is minus minus help option here so that you can see what parameters and what options do you have to run evidently UI, but I'm happy with the default options, so I'm just going to call evidently UI. That's it. Now let's wait until our service starts. Yep. Now I can just copy the URL, go back to the browser, Here it is. You can see that we have a project list here and our New York Taxi Data Quality project as well. So if I open up this project, there is no dashboard yet because I did not configure it. But if I go to Reports folder, I already can see the report I loaded to my project before. I can hit the View button and basically see a very similar report to the one we see in our Jupyter Notebook, basically this one, right? So they are quite similar, well, absolutely similar actually, and that's very handy so that we can browse our reports there. So if you have several reports, all those reports will be listed here and you can add some tags or metadata so that you can easily find any needed report. Now let us add some more configuration to our project so that we can see pretty informative and nice dashboard. I'm just going to go back to our Jupyter Notebook and let me add a dashboard to our project. I would start from the title and add New York Taxi Data Quality title to our dashboard. So the idea is pretty simple. We have a dashboard in our project, so we can access it with help of project.dashboard. And to add any monitoring panel, you just use method add panel. Then we have several types of panels. It's always good to take a look at project documentation. I mean, evidently project documentation because it's all very well described there. So I'm gonna start from dashboard panel counter and I'm also later gonna be using dashboard panel plots.
Well, that's how I can add the first dashboard panel, which is dashboard panel counter. You see that I didn't use any metadata or tags during the report creation, so I'm not use any filters there. Well, there is no aggregation because I just want to create the counter with the title, so aggregation type is equal to none. Well, that's it. Now let us add a couple of more panels, for instance, a panel with the inferences count, which I can derive from the uh, dataset summary metric from my data quality preset, and also some statistics about missing value. I think that's pretty informative. So let me quickly add two panels. In this case, it's going to be dashboard panel plot instead of panel counter. Let's add a title like inferences count. And finally, let's add some values. In our case, you're gonna have only one panel value in this panel, which is inference count, and we can derive this from the dataset summary metric. Yeah, I think that's it. I also added the plot type, which is plot type line. I think it will suit us pretty well, or you can use scatter or bar. Actually, well, yeah, let me change it to bar. I think it will be even better. Not sure, but you can choose up to your personal preferences. And also the size of my panel will be half of the screen. And finally, let me add the third and the last panel for now. This is configured. In this case, it's going to be line so that you can just compare different types of plots and it will be again half sized. And as I said before, it's always good to save the configuration after we updated it. So I'm going to say project.save. Let me run it. Yeah, looks like it's all fine. And now I suggest us go back to our monitoring and see how it looks like now. So uh, yeah, now we're going back to the dashboard and we can see that we have some panels here. It's the counter panel with the name New York Taxi Data Dashboard, inference count and number of missing values. But as we have only one report as the data source, everywhere we have only one data point, right? Which doesn't uh, very interesting, but already a very good start. So in order to give a little bit better understanding on how our final monitoring dashboard can looks like, let us go back to our Jupyter notebook and quickly add one more data point so that we can see how those statistics change in time. So I go back here and in order to make it fast, I'm just going to, I think, yeah, just going to copy these instructions about how I created the regular report. Then I'm just going to change the date. So let us take next date, 29 of January. So make sure we updated the between method here. So, and we also gonna need to run add report methods from workspace again. So I think that's it. First, and the second step. 
And now if you go back to the dashboard, go to the reports, now we can see that we actually have two reports there for January 28 and January 29, right? And now our dashboard looks a little bit more interesting because we have two data points. And now I believe you understand that if you have a workflow that calculates evidently reports for you and you do it on a schedule like daily or every week or every 10 minutes up to your case, right? You can build pretty nice reports in a minute. Of course, it's always nice to learn what kinds of panels and statistics you can derive from evidently reports and add to your dashboard. And I believe it's a very good way to start monitor your data and models, especially in case you have a batch models deployed in production very quickly. So this is it. That's all I wanted to share with you in this video. And in the next video, we are going to start building our Grafana dashboard.